everybody and welcome to another episode of NAPCHAT. Today we're joined by Natilic's own award-winning wireless expert Dan Jones. Hi Dan and welcome to the podcast. How are you today? Hello, I'm very well. Thank you for having me on. How, how are you? Yeah, not too bad, thank you. Yeah, having a good week so far, so good. all good. So we're ha- really excited to have you here today to talk about the latest and greatest Wi-Fi innovation um, if you haven't heard, Wi-Fi 6E. So um, before we get stuck into all those exciting things, let's um, get to know a little bit more about our guest today. So Dan, tell us a little bit about you and your background. Yeah, so uh, my name's Dan. I have been working in wireless for m- many years. <laughs> um, I, I first came into it uh, actually when I was uh like a network admin of a school um obviously you know adding devices and things like that um we put some ipads into the school and obviously they didn't have a kind of wired network connection everything was wireless so that was kind of what got me into it originally um and then from there um yeah g- going to different places wireless was kind of always there in the background um and the the more I worked with Apple devices, the more they removed their kind of wired in connection. <laughs> um, and so it was kind of forced down a path really of, uh, of wireless. Um, but it, it was funny. It, it always had traditionally been like a, a routing and switching kind of guy. That was always my background. Um, but there was something, uh, I don't know, more of like an art form with Wi-Fi that I, that, just just twigged with me that I, I really liked um it was much more uh it wasn't so binary it was it was much more you know there's a gradient of how good wi-fi can be um and i liked the challenge of uh making that as 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 good as it could be uh which was quite different from the kind of standard routing and switching stuff so um yeah my my, my background has 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 been uh, in wireless, solely in wireless, uh, for kind of the last kind of five, six years. Um, yeah. And as you said, <laughs> award winning, uh, last year I actually won an award, um, uh, as in terms of like contributing back to the, the Wi-Fi community. Uh, so that was like a, a real high point for me. Yeah. I can imagine it's quite impressive really. And it's just nice, you know, if you're, something you really enjoy doing and then to get recognized yeah is um yeah yeah and it was it was voted for by other wireless engineers right so you know they're the ones that are kind of you know hearing my contributions whether that's through kind of twitter my blog podcast things like that you know they're the ones that then voted to kind of say you know we want to say you know uh, whatever give the award to dan um which uh yeah is a, a real honor Yeah, definitely. So it sounds like we definitely have the right person for the job <laughs> today on the podcast um, when it comes to finding out more about Wi-Fi 6E. So um, let's get stuck in. So maybe let's start with a bit of an overview of what Wi-Fi 6E is. Um, yeah. Maybe you can tell the listeners what it is, what it makes it <laughs> such an exciting development for um, wireless connectivity. Yeah, yeah, great. So I think I think one of the, the first things that I kind of want to highlight to people, which, which I think uh, is kind of lost because the Wi-Fi Alliance called it Wi-Fi 6E, it's, it, there is a difference between Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 6E, right? Um, so Wi-Fi 6 is 802.11ax, which is like the the amendment that that we're using, right? Which which brings some kind of new features and things like that. So we get the ability to send to multiple devices, both in the uplink and the downlink. Um, we get a, a new modulation technique, which is called OFDMA, uh, which we've kind of stolen from cellular which again allows us to, if we've got a, a, a full channel, rather if we've only got a small bit of data, rather than having to use the whole channel to send that really small bit of data, we can actually split that channel into smaller chunks. Um, so we can send that data to, you know, two or three different devices at the same time, which is which is what cellular does. Um, so cellular is really good at being efficient. 
and that's what we got in Wi-Fi 6. We also got something called target wake time, um, which is amazing for mobile devices um, because basically what it says is, look, you know, this is the timing schedule and basically you can turn yourself off and save some battery life. Just come back to me at this time and check in. Um, and so again, that's great for, for mobile devices and things like that, right? Which, which is really useful uh, to save some battery. Um, so those are the main things that we had in Wi-Fi six and obviously Wi-Fi six has been, been, is being deployed all the time. Uh, but it uses that same spectrum that we've always had, which is the 2.4 band and the five gigahertz band. Now that's fine and that's great. And we'd rather have Wi-Fi six in those areas than not. Um, but the problem with the 2.4 and the five band is that we've been using them for years and years and years, and we've got loads of old legacy devices that can't do these new things. They can't split up the spectrum and, and give out little bits. And so those newer Wi-Fi six devices in those bands kind of have to play to the weakest link. If that makes sense, they kind of have to, they have to do the dumbest thing that the most dumb thing can do. <laughs> <laughs> if, that, if that makes sense on the network. <laughs> so it, it, it ends up slowing everything down in those bands. Um, and so where 6E is like, I think it's going to be kind of like revolutionary, is that we get those enhancements, those things that are going to make a massive difference, especially for things like real-time applications like, you know, WebEx calls, um, you know, voice calls over wireless, things like that. It's going to bring those innovations into a completely kind of green chunk of spectrum uh, in, in 6 gigahertz. So Wi-Fi 6E is Wi-Fi 6 in six gigahertz uh, they should have called it like wi-fi six plus six or something <laughs> you know <laughs> um but yeah so effectively it's 6e because it's wi-fi six extended into six gigahertz uh, which obviously sits right next to five gigahertz um but again one of the one of the main things that i think you know again people don't necessarily get straight away is that in the five gigahertz band we only have eight channels that we can do whatever we want with the other channels in that band in that five gigahertz band have got something called dfs where basically wi-fi has to play second fiddle to things like radar weather weather radar things like that so if any of those things happen everything just has to shut off for half an hour in that in that channel and so whilst we still use them because we'll use whatever spectrum we can get hold of, it is less reliable. And obviously you then end up with either coverage holes or you have to make sure you've doubled up on your AP so that if, if one AP goes down, you've got something else that can cover that space. Whereas in the six gigahertz band, obviously in the, in the EU, we've got 500 megahertz, which is effectively what we've got in five gigahertz again, but we don't have any of these DFS uh, kind of channels that we can't use or that we have to play second fiddle to. So rather than having eight channels that we can do whatever we want with, we now have 24 channels that we can do whatever we want with, um, where, where effectively it's still a shared medium. We still have to, you know, respect other devices that might be on there, but there are no other devices that are on there. <laughs> so it's completely free to us for, for us to use. Um, and in the EU, we've only got, you know, we've got these kind of 20, 24 channels. Uh, whereas in places like the US where they've got 1200 megahertz, they've actually got 59 channels that they can use. <laughs> so it's like massive, massive amounts of, of space. And, and so you can either do two things with that, right? You can either have lots of APs with, with smaller channels, like we have now in five gigahertz. So instead of having, you know, eight APs that don't overlap, we can now have 59 APs or 24 APs if we're in the EU that don't overlap, which is, which is amazing. Cause that effectively means we can now have 24 devices talking all the time at a minimum, or we can go, well, actually what we want to do is we're going to bond some of those channels together and we're going to have Wi-Fi that goes much faster. 
So rather than having wireless that works at, say, like 100 meg or 150 meg, we can have wireless that's now working at 500 meg, um, which, again, you know, is, is a, a, you know, a fivefold or a fourfold increase in, in, in throughput and in bandwidth, which is going to open up a whole new level of things that we're able to do wirelessly. So things like augmented reality, virtual reality, things like that are you're going to see that come to the forefront, I think, even more because now we're going to have the bandwidth and and not have to wait for other things to happen uh, so that those kind of things can actually be actually used in the real world and not just in a lab. Um, yes. Yeah. So I, I think it's I think it, it I think a lot of people don't realize how big a change this is. There's no backwards compatibility. We don't have to go as fast as the slowest thing anymore because there's nothing else there. So, we, you know, everyone's being given a, a Ferrari and they can drive as fast as they like <laughs> in, in six gigahertz. Whereas, <laughs> whereas, you know, five gigahertz is like you've been given a Ferrari, you've been given a brand new device that can do all these amazing things, but you're stuck on the M25. <laughs> and so you can't go fast because you're stuck in traffic. <laughs> um, Whereas, yeah, six gigahertz is like you, you've been chucked on the autobahn and you can go as fast as you like. I like that analogy. That's, um, <laughs> yeah, I think that really explains like the difference between Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 6E because I think sometimes, it, you know, it's quite tricky to, to really understand the, yeah. the naming convention and, and why Wi-Fi 6E would be so much better than Wi-Fi 6. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, that, that all makes sense. So for you, what is the one singular piece of wi-fi 6e and and all what it brings what's yeah. the most exciting bit for you i think i think the biggest thing for me is this lack of interference right so so the 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 biggest problem we have in wireless at the moment in the 2.4 especially the 2.4 but also the 5 gigahertz band is that there's so much in there that you know wi-fi is really really it's like it's like the canadians of uh of technology right that is so polite they will they, everything stops and waits and opens the door for everything else it, wi-fi wants to go last right and um it, and it's designed like that on purpose it's designed like that so that it doesn't interfere with with other stuff the problem is when it was built um there wasn't very much of it right so it was okay that it went last because there was nothing else happening. Um, and so what you end up with uh, in 2.4 and 5, especially 2.4, right? 2.4 is virtually unusable now because you've got microwaves, you've got Bluetooth, you've got, you know, remote control cars and drones that all use this 2.4 band. And basically, if Wi-Fi hears anything, any energy whatsoever on, on the kind of air, it just goes, oh, can't talk. Um, and so what we found as kind of Wi-Fi has become more and more prolific, right? So I think I read somewhere that it's like 6.2 billion devices are in use, right? So <laughs> that's going to cause some noise on the air. So if anything is ever talking, Wi-Fi will just wait. It'll only ever talk if, if there's no noise whatsoever. Um, and so that's been the problem with the, the 2.4 and the 5. With the 6 gigahertz, because there's nothing there, there's nothing talking, the only things that will ever be talking are the devices that we put there in 6 gigahertz. N not only do we have much more space, much more, more bandwidth we can use, because everything is going to be using the latest technology rather than 30-year-old technology, that waiting period isn't going to be as, as it isn't going to be as bad because they figured out ways to get it to work with each other like we do with cellular. Um, so, you know, rather than again, you know, having a single lane road that you have to, you know, pull into the side and wait for someone to go past and things like that. We've now got a 24 lane highway um, and we can put one car down it or we can put, you know, massive things that, that, take up three lanes down it at the same time and it's not going to be a problem yeah no that all sounds sounds really exciting so 
someone's listening now and they're they're thinking like oh that sounds really great so <laughs> can someone start to use that now is it kind yeah. of available to, to to kind of get wi-fi six devices and start a rollout if you know you wanted to tomorrow for example yeah yeah absolutely so um you can already go out and you can buy laptops that have got Wi-Fi 6E cards in them. Um, so we're already seeing things from Intel uh, that can do that. Um, again, just for people, be aware there's the difference between Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 6E. So Wi-Fi 6 is 6 in the 6 gigahertz spectrum. Um, so just be aware because th they'll probably put on the thing, you know, Wi-Fi 6, <laughs> that's different from 6E. So, so make sure you're buying ones at 6E. Um, so yeah, the, the clients are there. You, you, we've got loads of Android phones that uh, can use Wi-Fi 6E. All the, the kind of top ones from Google and Samsung all use Wi-Fi 6E. Um, and now all the vendors, you know, all, all, all the wireless infrastructure vendors have got their kind of flavors of Wi-Fi 6E APs as well. Um, so yeah, absolutely. You you can start using that. You know, if, if you're finding that your Wi-Fi is slow or you keep getting dropped off the Wi-Fi, absolutely. The thing you should be doing right now is is putting a six gigahertz Wi-Fi network in. Um, we were kind of hoping that Apple were going to put six gigahertz in the new iPhone, but they didn't, uh, which kind of shocked the the wireless industry. We were really expecting that that was going to happen. Um, and they haven't. So we're wondering now if that's going to be held off for the new iPad or the new MacBook Pros or, or, or whatever. Um, but yeah, so I, I mean, as soon as the iPhone, uh, you know, comes out, it is, that is the most used wireless device, right? The iPhone. Um, so I think as soon as that gets it, which will probably be next year now, um, you probably want to have a, a six gigahertz network ready to go. Um, Otherwise, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna be finding you're not gonna be getting the best experience. So people have about a year then to to get ready. Maximum. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, good to know. And so, so if someone does think that they want to, to go about implementing Wi-Fi six E, how how would you go about doing it? Is it the same as um, you know other, other kind of Wi-Fi rollouts and are, yeah. are there any kind of pitfalls or or other things to watch out for which we haven't experienced on the other kind of spectrums? Yeah, I mean we kind of have experience. So so yes, the answer is yes. There are some considerations that we need to have. Right, um, there's there's a few different things in the sense of um, in Wi-Fi you know, the, the five gigahertz spectrum, for instance, we've kind of been used to having these indoor out P's and outdoor APs, right? Um, and that's fine. And that kind of continues on in, in Wi-Fi 6E. So there's kind of three classes of Wi-Fi 6E APs. There's very, that th there's very low power APs, which I haven't seen any of yet. And that's more like a kind of like my fi device or, you know, something like that. Um, like a personal AP. Uh, there's the low power indoor APs. Um, and that's like your standard AP that, that you'll probably have in an office space now or at home now. Um, and, and those are only allowed to be used indoors. Whereas at the moment, what we could do is take an indoor AP, put it in a box and use it outside. We won't be able to do that in Wi-Fi 6E. Um, and then you have the standard power APs. Um, and the standard power APs are ones that we can use uh, indoor and outdoor, um, but they're the only ones that we'll be able to use outdoor. Um, and those have a subset of those channels that they're allowed to use. So there are some channels that you can't use outdoors um, out of those kind of 59 that we have. W what I would say is that in the EU, we're relatively lucky because we only have that that first 500 meg mega megahertz. Uh, we can use that in, indoors and outdoors. It's only the upper the upper bits where we have to be careful. Um, but the interesting thing to note is that when you buy a client, they will they will they will have a rating for you can only use this indoors. So they'll only use six gigahertz indoors, or they might only ever use it outdoors, or they might do both. Um, and so that is one consideration. 
uh, what I would say at the moment is that everything that's available at the moment is indoor only, um, which is kind of where things start, right? Because when you're outdoors, we've got we've got 5G, we've got 6G coming, you know, all those kind of things. When you're outside, you, you're kind of probably covered unless you're out in the middle of nowhere. Um, so they're kind of focusing on indoor at the moment. Um, but what, yeah, so that, that's one thing to be aware of, right? The next thing is we, and we had this before when we went from having 2.4 wireless networks and then we started putting in five gigahertz networks. It was like, oh, you know, my, my five gigahertz AP doesn't, or my SSID doesn't go as far as my 2.4. That's kind of incorrect that they, they actually go as far as each other. You know, if, if I fired a, a 2.4 and a five gigahertz AP at the moon, they, they would reach the moon at the same time. They both travel at the speed of light um, and they both go as far as quickly. The difference is... Uh, the aperture of the antenna, right? So 2.4 aperture antenna is, is, is bigger. It's a bit like a, a camera. It will allow more light in. When you go to five gigahertz, that gets smaller. And then obviously now as we go to six gigahertz, that goes smaller again. Um, and so what we have is, is in that same vein where people say, you oh, know, my 2.4 doesn't go as far. What they mean is it gets absorbed by material quicker so if i have a wall in the way it gets absorbed more in five gigahertz than it does in 2.4 um and so we, we we will have the same thing with six gigahertz so you won't be able to just take where you've got an ap now if you've got a really really perfectly well designed five gigahertz network you won't be able to just take that down and put up a six gigahertz ap and the reason for that is that um the wall materials right so it will go through something like plasterboard almost exactly the same as five gigahertz but if there's a brick wall it won't go through it <laughs> so well it will go through it but it will massively reduce the energy that gets through that wall so you either have to turn it up a lot louder so that it can get through or you just have to go right okay maybe we need to think about how we're going to design this because you know does everyone know what walls they have? Does everyone know, oh, that's definitely a plasterboard wall. That's definitely a, a concrete block. That's definitely, you know, red brick. That's definitely whatever. I would say most of the time people don't know. And so really the only way for us to kind of uh, test that is to go onto site, have a six gigahertz AP, fire it at a wall and test one side, test the other side and go, right, okay, that's allowing 2 dB of loss for 6 gigahertz, um, which will be completely different to 5 gigahertz. So, again, like I say, if, if we've got a brick wall, say, uh, and we fire 5 gigahertz at it, on, on the side where the AP is, we might have, you know, 40. On the other side, we might have neg 45. So it's a 5 dB loss on that wall. With 6 gigahertz, it wouldn't be 5 dB. It would probably be something like 15 dB. Um, so we, we're losing so much energy from that. So that's why we would have to do a survey, do a proper, you know, you know, take an AP there, test it, make sure that what we think the wall is made of, the wall is actually made of, um, and then adjust our design based off of that. Yeah, sure. So, yeah, the, the design and like the, the surveying, the testing were always critical to a successful roll out there massively yeah and and, and I, I i get that you know for the last few years we've had a lot of 2.4 and 5 gigahertz networks right so for the last 10 years people have just replaced 2.4 and 5 and so some places have kind of gotten away with if if you know if their environment hasn't changed much if their devices haven't changed much over that time they've kind of gotten away with just rip what we would call rip and replace um whereas now you, you know one probably the way wireless is being used has changed so you'd want to have a redesign anyway because we used to design for coverage whereas now we design for capacity um and so you'd probably need to redesign because of that anyway but even more important now is the fact that this six gigahertz spectrum is going to work so differently from the five gigahertz that we've been used to really if you're going to do a redesign you may as well do it now to get you know the, the capacity there and then you can also then monopolize on 
on the new Wi-Fi 6E. Absolutely. And and there are there are a bunch of APs, right, where they've kind of realized, hey, not everyone's got loads of Wi-Fi 6E devices. And so what they've got is they've got these flexible radios. So you can buy an AP where it's 2.4 and two 5 gigahertz radios. And then kind of when you go, oh, you know, we're refreshing our laptops or we're, re- we're sending out new phones to all of our people that's now got six gigahertz, you can flexibly change one of those five gigahertz radios into a six gigahertz radio. Um, and so that's what we're doing with quite a few clients already is, is we're looking at designing for now but with six gigahertz in mind for the future. So we've done a six gigahertz design, but at the moment it's deployed as dual five gigahertz to give them more capacity in the short term until they get those new kind of clients in uh, ready, ready for six gigahertz in the future. Yeah. So yeah, future proofing there's definitely the way forward, isn't it? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Because you, you want to make sure that that any money you're spending now, you're going to get a decent return on investment, like long term, right? So yeah, it's it's absolutely worth, you know, if, if you're going to have a survey done, if you're going to have a design done, get it done for six gigahertz now. Um, because if nothing else, even if you don't get the six gigahertz APs now, at least you've got that design so that in the future you can, you can put those six gigahertz APs in. Yeah, it all makes sense. No, really exciting stuff. So thank you so, so much for your time today. It's no worries. Super interesting and insightful to to hear about what Wi-Fi 6E and, uh, you know, why it's different to Wi-Fi 6 and, and all of that, clearing all, all of those kind of maybe confusing points up. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, and also I... great tips on deployment and getting how to get started in future proofing and all those good things yeah yeah absolutely i think i think one of the biggest things we've seen recently is are these real-time applications right these things where you need low latency low jitter you want good quality audio and video through that's going to be the thing that wi-fi 6e has a massive impact on Um, because what we're going to see is in the same way that the cell cellular towers work wirelessly and you can have thousands of people to one tower all working really really well it's bringing that technology into the enterprise into the office um i think that's going to have a massive impact yeah massive game changer i'd say mm. yeah agreed <laughs> <laughs> so in terms of um next steps for anybody's um looking at wi-fi 6e rollout we do now offer wi-fi 6e surveys um, yeah Natilic can offer those which is brilliant and um so you know if you're if you're interested and you want to get like the the design the right solution designed and get the very best wireless experience not just now but in the future um then then they are available there will be a link um in the show notes if you're interested in that so um yeah take a take a look and and see what you think but um yeah um... that's and, and and I'm I'm really happy, you know, if, if people want to find out more or they, or they want to, you know, have a chat to me about, you know, what they're thinking of doing in the future. Like, I'm I'm sure if, if they get hold of Natilic, um, you know, they, they can put them in touch with me and, and we can chat through and have a conversation about it as well. Yeah, definitely. I know I'd want to speak to you if I was, if I was doing that. So. <laughs> You're very kind. Super. <laughs> Well, thank you again, Dan. Um, I guess that's all for now. Thank you to Dan, our guest, and thank you for everybody um, for listening today. And um, yeah, hope you have a good rest of the day. Cheers. Cheers.